about the blood of Jesus. Walk out. But the blood of Jesus walk and wash. Good morning. On the cross there is blood for me. Good morning, good morning. Welcome. On the cross there is blood for you. a cross there is blood for you for you oh thank you Jesus that makes me no harder thank you Jesus Nothing but the blood. Hallelujah. Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Good morning, good morning, and welcome. Nothing but the blood. <laughs> what can make me all again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That makes me white as snow. Nothing but the blood. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That white as snow nothing but the blood of jesus on a hill on the cross for you thank you jesus on the cross for you hallelujah yes daddy jesus on a hill on the cross for you on a hill on a cross for you yes jesus Oh, 
that makes me white as no no other nothing but the blood jesus hallelujah yes jesus cleanse us oh god with your blood mighty god cleanse us with your precious blood yes daddy jesus wash us and cleanse us with your blood thank you jesus glory be to god jesus never ending reckless love of god good morning and welcome welcome to breakfast my name is reverend joycelyn radigan some call me dr radigan i just want you to know the word of god is active and alive good morning it doesn't matter where you are you could be in your bed good afternoon i see people here from germany i see people here from hartford connecticut new haven connecticut new york brooklyn new york grenada good morning welcome 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 good morning in jamaica they would say morning hallelujah i see people here yes from kingston jamaica good morning and welcome welcome to breakfast with jesus we are here this morning to pray hallelujah the lord placed some words on my heart and i'm here with it i'm not here because i want to be here i'm here because the lord sent me here amen so let us pray before we get into the word god bless you all good morning good morning and welcome i'm praying that this message it blesses your spirit i'm praying that this message bring forth conviction so if there is any sin that needs to fix today you will come to realize that there is something that needs fixing today oh god i present your people before you and we bind up that spirit of addiction yes some people are addicted to so many things they don't even realize that they are addicted because it becomes normal and this morning i present your people before you oh god let thy will be done nothing but the blood of jesus that can wash away our sins wash them up this morning oh daddy cleanse them oh god prepare their heart for this message let thy will be done father in the name of jesus christ we come before you to lift our voice to you to seek your face to give you honor and praise we adore you this morning daddy jesus forgive us for our trespasses forgive us our sins lord forgive us forgive us our unrighteousness set us in the right path O oh god clear our troubled mind in the name of jesus christ of nazareth many are asking for wealth many are asking for health many are asking O oh god for things that they cannot handle this our mighty god i ask you to turn it around for your people turn it around for their good many are asking for stuff lord god that when you release it to them their own family will destroy them bless your people today lord lead them into the path of righteousness for your name's sake that when they walk through the valley of the shadow of death they will never fear because you are with them have mercy upon the merciless remember them today oh god remember those who show no mercy touch their heart lord change their story remember those who are oppressors that are oppressing your people 
fix their heart, Lord. Let your will be done according to your word. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We say thank you, Lord. Bless who is sick here among us today. Heal them, my God. We pray for divine healing. We pray that some that had surgery will recover speedy. Speedy recovery. We pray that this person that have been robbed will get over it. Touch their heart, Lord. They're saying that they can't believe it. Lord, bless your people today. Bless your people today, O oh God. Let thy will be done. Let your will be done even in our children's lives, in our loved ones, in the people that are among us, even those that are far away, even in our enemies. You said we should pray for our enemies. You said anybody hurt us, Lord God, we should pray for them. Touch the heart of the wicked one today, Lord. Give them their reward. I decree and I declare it done in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody go ahead and share this broadcast. My God. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. The Bible said we should pray for our enemies. We should pray for even the people that hurt us bad. We should forgive them and forgive them quick. Jesus. Hallelujah. In the book of Mark, the Bible said when we pray, we should forgive those who hold grudge against us and forgive those who we hold grudge against them. We should let them go. Let God deal with them. The devil is fighting some of God's people. So we cannot get mad when they make mistakes. We just leave them alone and leave them to God. Allow God to deal with them. Tell somebody, allow God to deal with them. Allow God. You see, some people have been fighting since they were children. And even when they became adults, they are still fighting. They even fight with people who don't even, are not even guilty. Hallelujah. Yes, because that is their trial. That is their tribulation. That is their journey. Good morning. I feel like preaching. Hallelujah. Good morning and welcome to breakfast. Hallelujah. I see people here from Florida. I see people here from Grenada. More people. I see people here from New Jersey. Good morning, New Jersey. Good morning, Bloomfield, Connecticut. Hallelujah. Good morning, South Carolina. You know, we give God honor and praise. Somebody go ahead and begin to share this message. I encourage you, share with seven people that you care for. You know, a lot of people, they don't talk. They are quiet, but they are watching from afar. And when you share with them, sometimes they can't tell you, but they are convicted. So it seems as if when you share with someone and they don't respond, that does not mean that they don't view it. They view it. But sometimes the message is so strong, they don't have anything to say. They just soak it all up. So I am here to let you know. Good morning. I see people here from Maryland. Good morning. Go ahead and share. Hallelujah. Good morning, Kingston, Jamaica. Glory to God. Yes, go ahead and share. My God, somehow I'm lifted. I feel lifted. I feel lifted up. My, my spirit man is elevating and I, I can feel it. You know, I don't know if you get that feeling when something is going to happen that is good. You get that feeling. And then when something is going to happen that is bad, you still get that feeling. You know that feeling. Hallelujah. 
when you are connected, you don't miss any detail. When you... <laughs> Good morning, Sister Anik. Good morning, Sister Angela. Good morning, Siobhan. Good morning, Sister Kathy. Welcome. You see, today is Tuesday, but some of us are stuck in yesterday because we, 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 we reflect our life around social media so much, so strong, that when things don't work out in our favor, we don't know what to do with ourselves. But let me tell you, yesterday, I was so into the word, and I was... I was just my spirit man. The, my, my spirit man was, oh, I, I, I just thank God for the moment. You see, many of us, we spend yesterday doing other things, talking about other things. But when we don't get what we desire, we need to stay in the word. Sometimes God will give us an opportunity to, to, to wallow in the word of God. So when things don't go as planned, go to God. Go in the word and you will find comfort. Amen. This morning I want to talk about sin. Yes, I want to talk about forgiveness. Forgiveness of sin and sin. I want to talk about sin. And forgiveness of sin. In the book of Acts chapter 3. Somebody open your Bible with me. And turn to the book of Acts chapter 3. Verse. Sister Maxine welcome. We have more than one Maxine here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Welcome to both. Jesus. Welcome. Acts chapter 3. I'm going to start reading from verse 19. I like, I like to share scriptures, especially with people that are up and about with your busy life. You know, I like to drop a few scriptures in their spirit, something for them to think about during the day. Amen? This is why God sent me out here, to drop something in your spirit so you can just reflect on it. <laughs> Sister Janetta, how are you? <laughs> Hallelujah. In the book of Acts chapter, I'm going to read from King James Version. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. If you have your Bible, you could screenshot it on your phone or take a picture of the scripture and share it. I'm going to start from verse 19 to verse 20, 21. It says, repent. Repent. Hallelujah. The Bible is making it clear for us to repent. Even leaders have to repent. We all fall short. So we have to repent. We have to fix that. The word repent, it means it's an expression or remorse of your wrongdoing. So when someone says repent, they're not disgracing you. They are saying, go and repent, go and fix what needs to be fixed. Many of us are struggling with addiction. Sometimes it's fleshy. We love, we love the things that are, we are not supposed to do. We have a problem that we think we are free to do whatever we want to do. No. No. So the word repent. Meaning to check yourself. To view your action. The word repent. It's that something you did. That you need to clear yourself from it. Yeah, you know, when you, you feel toxic, when you're young and you feel toxic, or your parents, they knew that 
they want to clean your system i would i would I, I, I'm, let me try to find the right word they would give you something like wash out some give you a chocolate and the chocolate will take you to the bathroom because it's cleaning your system some give you you know tea so it cleanses your system but that is not repentance it's cleansing your spirit to, 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 to ask God to forgive you for the things that you have done or the things that you're even thinking. Sometimes it's a thought. The Bible said the thought of foolishness is a sin. So sometimes we sin and we don't know. Jesus, who am I talking to? The Bible make it clear. It says sometimes we sin and we don't even know it. So every day we have to repent. Here we are in the book of Acts. If you're just joining Acts chapter 3. Sometimes let me share something with you. You don't have to carry out a thought. When you think about it, it's a thought. When you do it, you're acting on your thought. So, we pray that these evil thoughts that we get sometimes, you know when your spouse get on your nerves, you wish they disappear and don't come back? That's an evil thought. Yeah. You know when the children get on your nerves and you wish that they just leave you alone forever that's an evil thought but you are human and this is why we have to repent you know when your boss get on your nerves so bad you wish something bad would happen yes you know when you see that couple and they look so good together and you are single and you wish that person would die so you get their spouse many people allow those evil thoughts to manifest and then they begin to act on it we have to repent and this is how witchcraft comes in because our thoughts the devil visit our thoughts that's what he did and we allow the thing to come to come to pass we allow manifestation of that evil thought so now the Bible is telling us it's a, it brings a feeling of regret about something that we actually did. We think about it. Some of the things that we are thinking about, we say it. The Bible declared that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Sometimes the evil that we are thinking, oh devil, you are a liar, it comes out of our mouth. You didn't mean to say it, but because you're processing the thing for a while, the thought came to you. So you have to abort that negative thought. Who am I talking to? Sin begins in the mind. Yes. It's a thought that we process, especially if we are angry. Especially if this person makes us feel bad. Even if the person have never done us anything, we allow the devil to overtake our mind. And we begin to process evil thoughts. It can happen to anyone. So it takes spiritual strength. Not physical strength. Because the thing is spiritual. It's your mind. It's your emotions. So it takes spiritual strength. To block and release this thing. To God. And said, oh God, clear my mind. Somebody said, oh God, clear my mind. Somebody said, oh God, clear my mind. Somebody said, oh God, clear my mind. Sometimes someone, you know, it could be an old friend 
who is no longer a part of your life. And you wish them to die. Why? Because they have something that you think you need. Listen to me. You don't need what someone else has. God have your blessings. God have your own spouse that he designed for you, ordained to be in your life. Some of us, we try to even hold on to people that's not ours. We do things to manipulate them. God said it's not so. I remember I had a cousin that he couldn't read. When I was a child, he couldn't read. We used to laugh at him because he stutter. You see, lack of knowledge caused people to perish. We didn't understand. He stuttered so bad. And he couldn't read. So, you know, he speak fast. But he was very handsome. The man was muscular. He has no fat on him. And God bless him. Somehow God bless him with a farm work card. And he came to America. And he got married. The man went back to school. The man received speech therapy. No, that man. We don't even hear from him. Because we used to mock him. We, we did not know. We used to shame him. People of God, when we are young, without knowledge, we make a lot of mistakes. Somebody say, oh God, forgive me. We used to make fun of him because of the way he speak. Now that I'm studying the word of God, I get to see Moses had the same disability, but God used him. So you see, when you, you may, I'm talking about the things that we did as kids. Not just myself, relatives along with myself. We used to make fun of the man. We laugh at him when he speak because he did not know how to speak. Because he grew up in the countryside. But let me tell you one thing he had that we didn't have. That man was built like a giant. He was firm. He, got, he was chiseled. He was blessed and we couldn't see it. He was chiseled, his body, he was like a bodybuilder, naturally built. And the moment God opened his doors and he came here, we never see or hear from him again. Why? He came and got himself cleaned up. He went back to school, he got married, he got therapy. God knows where he is. And I pray, I ask God to forgive me. I'm talking about... Things that we do that we are not aware how bad the, our behavior affect other people. We cannot keep mocking people. You see, it's a form of bullyism. When we make fun of others and speak ill of others, ay, 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 who am I talking to? You see, I'm, I, I'm only going on repent. That is the only thing I mentioned from the word of God. Repent. We need to repent. Somebody put up this scripture. It says repent you. The word why ye mean you. It's referring to you and I. Repent dear you therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. People won't like this message today, but because it can, it's here to correct us. Many of us, when we were kids, we were bullies. You know who a bully is? When I got older and I found out who people who bully other people, they are victims of the same thing. Because we were victims as young children, we used to victimize other people. With our words, people have got words carry weight. Words carry weight. We talk about other people. We don't care if we hurt their feelings because we need to cleanse ourselves. So nowadays when I when, when I hear it, hello, I used to be guilty of it. 
I used, I'm raising my hand because I was once a bully. Because I used to get bullied. So every bully is a victim of bullying. When somebody bully you, it's because somebody used to bully them. Hello? So we're talking about repentance. Repentance from things that we did or think about or practice or some of us are working on it to do bad things. Do you know how many people just buy a ticket, jump on a plane and go somewhere to hurt somebody else? Somebody said, Lord, forgive me. Yes, there are people out there who are praying and waiting for you to die prematurely so they can walk in your shoes and they don't know your pain. There are people out there planning your demise and they don't know what you're going through. They want you to leave the scene. They want you to disappear. They don't know what you're going through because you didn't tell them. But because the way they see you look, the way you behave, the way you talk, the way you handle your business, they don't know your pain. And they are fighting against you secretly. Some are competing against you. Oh, somebody said, Lord, forgive me. We are talking about the book of Acts. If you're just joining, we are in the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. It says, repent. We need to repent. We need to set things in order. We need to stop with the negative thoughts. I'm not here to blast anybody. I'm talking about us. I'm not here to gossip about anyone. I'm talking about we need to fix our life. We need to get things straight. Many of us, we will, they will try to get us to join them to speak against other people. You know, according to the book of Matthew, it said you have a big old electrical post in your eye. But you're trying to take the gravel out of my eye. Pull out that electric post out of your eye and go repent. We are not here to throw words at anyone. We are getting our life in order. So when our blessing comes, we are in alignment. Many people, they'll tell you. I'm like, I, lo I love to talk about Jacob. Jacob had two women. Two ba four baby mother. He got a lot of animals, people working for him. He felt like a big man. But he was not blessed. When he saw the angel of the Lord, he grabbed the angel. The angel said, let me go. He said, no, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. People of God, let me tell you something. Money is not blessing. Some people have access to money, but they are cursed. They have a lot of access to money, but they wish they were in your shoes. They wish that there are some billionaires today wish they could hear this message so they can repent. Yes, there are some people out there wish they could hear this message so they can repent. People of God, just go ahead and begin to share. It's time for us to come clean. It's time for us to start speaking the truth and stop lying and cheating and stealing, backbiting, backstabbing. This is causing too much confusion. There are some people everywhere they go, they have a problem with someone. Why? Because they don't have any peace. Everybody's against them. The whole world is against them. Hello? Hello? Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? We're talking about sin according to the word of God. The Bible said repent. Repent. You, therefore, and be converted. It means change your ways. That your sin may be blotted out. Mighty God. 
It says, now repent of your sins and turn to God. We don't belong to ourselves. We are not free to do anything we want to do. No, no, this is the guide that will lead us into the path of righteousness, the Bible. Many of us, we have many different Bibles and we don't even read them. It is the guide. Yet we are in big trouble. We are troublemakers. We don't understand who we are. We don't know who we are. How could you not know who you are and you have a Bible? It tells you that you are royal priesthood and you should repent when you're wrong. It tells you that you are a chosen nation. It tells you that you are peculiar. It tells you that you are the apple of his eyes. God loves us so much. Yes, he wants us to be clean. He wants us to be ready when he comes. He wants us to stop dwelling in our flesh. He wants us to stop being so fleshy. God wants us to stop talking about other people in a negative way. You see, what you don't want, don't give it to other people. Speak of others. However, you want them to speak of you. We cannot control what other people do. So we will fix who we are. We can. We have the ability. Somebody said, Lord, touch my heart. Somebody said, Lord, touch my heart. Somebody said, Lord, touch my heart. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Somebody said, touch my heart, oh God. Let us look at Psalm chapter 51. Psalm chapter 51, verse 10. We need to know how to fix ourselves. We need fixing. We need balance. In order for us to live a clean, healthy life, we need balance. I'm going to come back to Acts chapter, yes, 3. I'm just going through this. Psalm 51 and verse 10. It says, create in me a clean heart. It means if you ask God to give you a clean heart, he will give you. Once you repent. And you said, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit. It means that the, the spirit that is contaminated, it can be renewed. Many of us, we get contaminated doing the wrong things, mixing with the wrong people. We can be renewed. Our spirit man can be renewed. He can. Our spirit God can change our spirit. If you know that you did something in the past, don't go to man, go to God and say, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. It goes, cast me not away from your presence. It means that God can cast us away from his presence. It is possible god will and he can if we are not right it means that if we don't have the right spirit we don't have the right heart god can cast us out of his presence so by sitting here talking about repent you see how important repentance is to us glory to god somebody said lord cast me not away from your presence he will, he will, he is able to cast us away from his presence. And you know, the big part of it is, it says, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Yes. Yes, it is possible for God to take away the Holy Spirit from us. Many of us, we behave as if 
We don't know that God, the one that give us can take it back. He can. He can. It's a gift. And you can lose it. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm going I'm to touch another scripture. Write this down, people of God. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Psalm 51, verse 10. We need to understand who we are. God can take back things from us. He can. He can. Some people say God don't take anything back. No, it is possible for him to move our lampstand according to Revelation. Oh, so you didn't know. So you didn't know. There are some people that are filled with the Holy Spirit and they only say one word. One, they never get to the next level. And once they repent and they begin to mix with the right people, with the right spirit, they begin to grow. Like trees, they grow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is the word of God. Jesus. Mighty God. Jesus. Oh God. Yes, Lord. Revelation chapter 2 verse 5. Let us look at it. Many of us, we think we are untouchable because God this and God that. If we are not clean, we will fall like when you cut down a tree. Revelation chapter 2. We are in the back of the Bible now. That's why I said, get your Bible. Write scripture down. So when we are not able to have access to social media, we have the Bible to go back to. Just like... Some people didn't have any, they didn't know what to do with themselves yesterday. All over the world. Because we base our life on that. Hallelujah. The Bible said, remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent. I'm talking about repentance. You see, God wants us to be clean. God don't want any of us to go to hell. God wants us to live a life, a clean life. You know one of the things that hurt the most? You're trying to be clean and you end up with some place that's not clean because you're feeding into your flesh. You're trying to be clean, but because of your flesh and the eyes, you're following your eyes. You're not following the spirit. You're following your eyes, the big bright lights and stuff. You end up to a place that's not fruitful, where no one has any growth. It's just sham. It's just what it looks like. Nothing spiritual is taking place. It's all flesh. Many of us get caught up with nothing but flesh because we are following our eyes. Hear this. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come into thee, unto thee quickly, and I will remove, listen to this, God said he will take back what he gave us. I will remove thy candlestick out of its place except thou repent. So when we are acting as if we are untouchable because we have access to material things, God is saying, look, remember your first love. I am your God. And if you don't repent, I will move your light. I will take your lights out. Now, according to Psalm chapter 51, verse 10, my God, listen to this. We are reading Bible here today. You listen to this. P 
pay attention. Many of us think that because we have a couple of dollars and we don't have any manners, we, we disrespectful, we talk about people anyhow, we carry on in you. God is not pleased with our actions. He is saying here, you need to correct that. Go repent. I am watching you. And if you don't repent, I will remove your lights. Hello? Hello, somebody. We're talking Bible here. God said, I will, I can. If you don't repent, you will lose what you have. Do you know some people, they started off good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Jesus. They started off good and they end up in their flesh. You see, people can bewitch you, so you end up in your flesh. How you know that? According to the book of Galatians, the Bible declare, it said, who bewitch you? You started off good in the spirit and you end up perfect in your flesh. It means that, yes, somebody can be with you when you're living a life to please God. There are some people that are jealous of you. That's all it's saying. And again, it's a thought that has manifested for people to be evil. It begins with a thought. Sin begins in the mind. Even if someone is trying to coerce you into do things that are wrong, you think about it and you like the idea that they present to you and you begin to follow through with sin. Somebody said, you will never destroy my spiritual life. We are reading, it's in the Bible. We are reading Bible here. Glory to God. Paul said, who bewitch you? Who bewitch you that you started off perf you started off good and now you become perfect in your flesh? So yes, people can be perfect in their flesh. My God. People can be perfect in their flesh. God is saying, you started off so good. I have been with you the whole time. And all of a sudden, you join with some people who are not clean. And you begin to act like them. You begin to talk like them. Jesus. Hallelujah. According to Galatians chapter 3, it says, Oh foolish Galatian, who bewitch you? It means that, yes, it's possible. Many people went into Christ. And they became radical in the spirit. And they are doing good. And somebody will bewitch them. It's possible. Whatever you see in the Bible, it is possible. Tell somebody, it is possible. It is possible. This is why Jezebel was so active in the book of Revelation. Jesus said, I gave Jezebel space to repent and they gave Jezebel permission to preach in church. It means that there are a lot of Jezebel, men and women Jezebel in the church preaching. We need to be able to discern. Especially when it comes to leadership. And maturity. Some people they want to be in leadership position. And they are not mature. They don't know how to relax. When something go wrong. Step on their toes. And it's a big fight. Yet you want somebody to ordain you. To be a leader. And you are not mature. And you don't know how to conduct yourself in public. You don't know how to bear something. And not crack under pressure. This is why there are so many fights in church. Who am I talking to here today? 
Some people want leadership position, but they are nowhere near. Somebody said, Lord, give me the spirit of discernment. They're not near that because they are still young in the spirit. They are not mature. They don't know how to behave. Hallelujah. A lot of people won't like this message, but it's touching every nerve that's necessary. Why? Yes. Galatians chapter 3. It says, Oh, foolish Galatian, who bewitch you that you should not obey the truth? Therefore, before those eyes, before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only I would learn, this only would I learn of you receive the Holy Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Hear this part. Verse 3. Are you so foolish? You haven't begun in the spirit and now you are made perfect in the flesh. It means that you started off good in the spirit and now you are back to square one. You are even worse than before. But Jesus said, Jesus Christ himself, he said it. Some people receive deliverance and after they receive the del deliverance, they go back to their old ways. And when they go back to their old ways, the demons that was delivered from them went and find seven other friends and came back stronger. No, they are worse than before. So they are perfect in the flesh. People received their deliverance while they were in church. And then they leave church because now they feel good, they're free. But that thing that they were set free from found them. With seven more bad friends. And destroy them. This is why we have to repent. Glory to God. Thank you Holy Spirit. Yeah. Galatians 3. Verse 3. It said. Are you so foolish. Having begun in the spirit. And are now made perfect by the flesh. I remember. They used to call me. Oh you are a new Christian. You don't understand talk about you're not gonna do this the devil is a liar anybody that will try to bring some things to you that is not of god bind it up they're trying to destroy your spiritual life they're not destroying your physical body they are destroying your spiritual walk with god here it is in galatians so this is why it says are you so foolish why would you let this happen we're talking Bible people of God. We need to be free. We need to repent and be free from sin. To be cleansed from sin. So we have to repent daily. Because we sin daily. So we have to repent. We have to go to God in prayer. And ask him to cleanse us. According to Psalm chapter 51 verse 10. My God. Psalm chapter 51 verse 10 remind us that God can take his, the spirit back from us. Revelation 2 and verse 5 it said God can remove our lampstand, our candlestick out of its place. Glory to God. Galatians chapter 3 remind us that yes, they can bewitch you to walk away from God. To make you mad. You know how many people were in church preaching in the spirit and everything. Now they are mad living on street corner. Somebody said, oh God help me. Acts chapter 3 verse 19 said, your sin needs to be blotted out. So repent. Repent so your sin can be blotted out. All this that I'm talking about here, it's repentance and sin. We need to be clean. God wants us to be clean. He said he wants us without spot and without wrinkle. He don't want not even one wrinkle. Glory to God. No wrinkle around here. 
You see, they got all different kinds of ministry. So when you're praying, ask God to lead you to the right one. Don't listen. Ask God to lead you to one that they won't fool you. I won't lie to you. I won't glorify with you in sin. We don't magnify sin. We magnify God. Holiness and righteousness. My God. We magnify holiness and righteousness. We don't magnify sin. So when you're praying, ask God to lead you into the path of righteousness according to the word. There are some responsibilities that we have as Christians. We need to be mature Christians. Everybody don't need to know what's going on in your house, number one. The world don't need to know what's going on in your house because you're having a little bit of problems. It means that you're not mature. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, don't be foolish. What the Bible is saying here in Galatians, don't be foolish. Why? He says, are you so foolish? It means that as Christians, we shouldn't be foolish. God don't keep fools. God don't keep fools. Many of us hide behind the Bible. Why? Because we do the wrong things. Yet we are talking. Listen, we need to start doing what we are saying. We need to start practice what we preach. Many of us when we sin, we say, oh God understand. God don't understand. God don't understand. This is why we have to repent every day. If God understand, then we wouldn't have to repent. We say, God understand. Somebody say, oh, me, me and God, we have a different kind of relationship. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Really? Really now? You and God have a different kind of relationship while you are dibble dabbling in sin. Really? I don't think so. I don't think so. It's time for us to repent. That's all I'm here to say. Hallelujah. God want to blot out your sin. Hallelujah. If you go somewhere and you see a trailer truck and they are distributing a lot of stuff, whatever it is, and you heard it's free, you're going to start to take a look to see if it's something that interests you. And if it's they're giving away stuff that interests you, you might try to get some, right? Check this out. Salvation is free. Salvation is free. You see, the year is coming to a close. We are coming close to the end of the year. We are in the month of October. We have two and a half months to go. And this is the time when the devil is seeking for blood. More people died during the end of the year than in the beginning of the year. And I'm not talking about no COVID. I'm talking about people are dying prematurely. The other day I was reading the news, the Gleaner, if you know what I'm talking about, the newspaper, the Gleaner, and it was saying that more people, a lot of people are dying. I remember, I think it was last year, before the pandemic, funeral parlors were paying gunmen 
to kill people so they would have business. It was in the news. I'm not talking hearsay. It was in the news because one of the gunmen, they were, the gunmen were hiding. Or they travel abroad, something, something, something. But the funeral parlor was paying people to kill innocent people because they were running out of business. No, they don't have anywhere to put them. I'm not trying to be funny. The amount of people that are dying, the funeral parlors are full. So the same funeral parlors that were paying gunmen to kill people so they could have business, now they are loaded with COVID patients, COVID bodies. Some people don't have any money to bury their family that die from COVID. Reality. A lot of people don't have the resources to take care of their dead family members that died from COVID. Remember what I said earlier. Gun they were paying they were paying those hitmen to kill so they could have business. No, because of COVID, they don't have any place to put you see, you have to be careful. Some of these people are dying too. Some of the gunmen died too. So I came to let you know, people of God, it's time for us to repent. Somebody said, oh God, forgive me. Forgive me, oh God. Oh God, forgive me for even my thoughts, my evil thoughts. My God. Oh God, forgive me for my evil thoughts. Sometimes we think some evil thoughts towards others. Jesus. Yes. It's time for us to spend more time in the word. Spend more time with God. Spend more time in God. Hallelujah. Yes, we need to understand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. <laughs> we need to spend more time in God. Somebody, let us look at the book of Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 9. If you think what I'm saying is a joke, someone screenshot Proverbs chapter 24 verse 9. We play too much. We, we idle too much. Nah. It shouldn't be so. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 9. We don't know the word of God more than anybody else. So this is why we are studying it together. Because we need to study the word so we can know. Yeah, we can know. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 9. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. It says, the schemes of a fool are sinful. So when people sit down and scam you and try to rob you and plan against you, they're in sin. Scammers, people that are scammers, they are living in sin. It doesn't matter what, if, if, what church they belong to. Some people will sit down and plan how they can get some things from you. All they got to do is just ask you. Oh, you got to, you don't have to present a case and lie and whatever, just ask. Just ask. You don't have to 
make up a story to get something from anyone. Just ask, can I get $100? Can I get $50? You don't have to do a lot of explaining to do. You don't have to make up any story to make yourself look like you're, you're in. No, just ask. It's either yes or no. Don't sit there and mastermind anything because the Holy Spirit is active. God will tell when you are lying. Your, your sin will tell on you. Yes. <laughs> I don't know how to lie. And because I don't know how to lie, I just keep my mouth shut. If I have an issue, I'll share it. So let us look at the book of Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 9 and see what it says. Did someone find it? We need to be clean. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 9. We need to be clean. We need to look to God for everything. We need to stop lying. Some of us, we know that we are not qualified for certain position, but because people tell us, we need to wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning. If you're just joining, welcome. We are in the book of Proverbs chapter nine, um, 24 verse 9. And I read. I talk about it all the time. I talk about this all the time, but I want people to read it for themselves. The thought of foolishness is sin. You know how I always say don't crack under pressure. It means that if you crack under pressure, you are weak. Verse 10, it says, If you faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If you're weak, you cannot do God's business. If you cannot keep your mouth shut, you cannot do ministry. If you are like an old refrigerator that leaks out every information that you ever receive about people, you cannot perform in ministry. It means that you cannot keep anything. Because there are some things that will happen in ministry where you're going to have to be quiet. Jesus, there were times when he told the disciples, he said, share this with no man. It means that it's not everything that you talk. Some of us will never make it to leadership because we talk too much. And as a leader, you have to keep some information. You have to be able to be strong. Here, the Bible said in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 10, if you are Fainting during the time of adversity, it means that your strength is small. If when trouble come and you begin to scream, wolf, wolf, how are you going to be in ministry? How are you going to hold other people's secret? Let me sit properly. I'm talking Bible here. If when people tell you their business in confidence, you want to be a leader and you cannot keep. It's written. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10. If you cannot keep people's secret, you cannot lead. I'm not knocking anybody here. I'm reading the Bible. I'm just breaking down the scripture so you can understand what, it's, what it means. What the Bible is saying here. Solomon was the wisest man. And he is the writer of Proverbs. So Proverbs is wisdom. If they cannot keep their own business, how are they going to keep yours? 
How are you going to trust them to keep yours? Whatever you are telling anybody, make sure you tell them something that anybody can hear. Because there are some people that don't keep anything at all. They are like a refrigerator. I'm talking Bible. Since we are going to read Proverbs 24 and 9, we may as well read verse 10. Because foolishness is sin. We may as well go into it. If you cannot share something with your pastor and your pastor cannot keep quiet, then we have a problem. Even if you're mad at pastor, pastor job is supposed to keep their mouth shut. Even if you're no longer a member of the congregation, pastor is not supposed to share that information. Because that was released in confidence. That's confidential. That's confidentiality. Hallelujah. The devising of foolishness is sin. And the scoffer is an abomination to men. We're talking Bible. So we can't live our life anyhow. We cannot live our life anyhow. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. We can't. Hey, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's not possible. Our body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in us, which he have God. And you are not your own. So you cannot do anything you want to do according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. You are not your own. You don't own yourself. Somebody said, I'm a grown woman. I do what I want to do. That's not true. That's not what the Bible said. You are not your own. You belong to God. Even if you backslide, he's already married to you according to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter what, 7 and 15. Mm -hmm. You are not your own. So don't do what you want to do and think God is pleased. You're not your own, Jesus. Who am I talking to? You're not your own. My God. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. You are not your own. Don't be foolish. According to Galatians 3 and what 5. Galatians 3 and 3. God can remove your lamp, your candlestick. Revelation 2 and 5. Psalm 51 and 10 said God can take back from us. Oh Lord. Acts chapter 3 and 19 said. It's time for our sins to be blotted out. It's time for us to repent so our sins can be blotted out. This is only to strengthen us. This is to make us understand who we really are. The word of God said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth throughout all generations. 
it's time for us to repent and stop with our foolishness. Mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter 24 and 9. 9 and 10. Don't crack under pressure because it proved that you're not strong enough to contain other people's strength, to strengthen anybody. If you cannot maintain strength, you cannot strengthen anybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Foolishness breeds sin. So people that are scamming other people out there, just know that it's a sin. It's against God. Because the thought of foolishness, whatever we mastermind that doesn't glorify God, is foolishness. And the thought of foolishness is a sin. Today I came to ask a few people, How are your spirit? How is your spiritual life? How now that you find out that you are not your own? How is your spiritual life? That is just one question that I have. How is your spiritual life? You see, some people they want to do Bible study, but they cannot handle the word of God. Some people say they want to do Bible study. But they cannot handle the truth because the word will manifest eventually. The things that are showing up. Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> you see, we have to be prepared. When we come to this platform to hear the truth, we have to be prepared. Prepare your spirit. If you are in your flesh, you will be offended with the word. If you are in the spirit, you will absorb the truth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Glory to God. We need to hear the truth. We need to know the truth. We need to believe the word of God. According to the Bible, it says every word of God is true. We don't have to make up anything when it comes to God's business and get loud about it. Nah. We don't have to get loud about it. Every word is true. And this is why the wrong people will bring you the word of God and fix it their way because of their scamming intentions. They know how powerful the word of God is. So they will come to you hiding behind the word. But may the Lord expose them. May the Lord expose those around you that are scammers. May the Lord expose the scammers that are coming at you. That's all I can say. May the Lord expose them. We are here with the truth. We need the word of God in our life so we can walk right. My God, we can walk right. According to Zechariah chapter 8 verse 16, it says, These are the things that you shall do. Speak you, every man, the truth to his neighbor. Execute judgment and truth and peace in your gates. Execute judgment, truth, and peace in your home. Lord of mercy. Oh, Jesus. Execute meaning that this is something that is expected of you. This is something that God wants you to do. Zachariah was a priest. 
He was John the Baptist's father. Hallelujah. So we are not going around the word of God. The Bible said, here is another message that came from the Lord. This is what the Lord of heaven army says. The traditional fast. Hallelujah. Now I was reading verse uh, 18. It said, but this is what you must do. Tell the truth to each other. Render verdict in your courts. And are that are just as the peace that leads to peace. So anything that would lead to peace, it's justice. Render justice in your home, in your courts, your home. Hallelujah. This is what you must do. Tell the truth to each other. Render verdict. Render. My God. Hallelujah. Render peace in your gates. Judgment in your home. It doesn't matter who is vexed. Speak the truth. Even if it, when it comes down to your children, tell them the truth. Because if you lie to them, if you don't tell your children the truth, somebody will lie to them. If you don't tell your children the truth, somebody out there will trick them. And the word of God said, even in your own home, in your gates, render peace. God want us to be clean. And if we follow the Bible, we cannot go wrong. Be honest in all your doings. Speak the truth. When Christians lie, it's aggravating. When, 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 when a Christian lie, what are we expecting those out in the world to do? When we are not living clean, what are we expecting those in the world to do? Expect of us. What do they think of us? When we are not living right, what do they think of us? When we are not doing the right things, what do they think of us? It would be better for someone to cut you off because of the truth than to cut you off because you lied to them. It would be better for someone to cut you off because of the truth than to cut you off because of a lie. It is better. Let me repeat that. It is better for somebody to cut you off because you spoke the truth than for them to dismiss you because you lied to them. Don't lie just to be liked or be loved. Don't be dishonest in order for someone to look at you. Speak the truth even in your house. If you cannot speak the truth in your house, how will you speak the truth in the house of God? Hello. Somebody said, oh Lord, help me to speak the truth. My God. Speak the truth. <laughs> you see, the Bible is filled with revelation. The Bible is filled with revelation. Zechariah chapter 8 verse what? 16, it says, speak the truth even in your own home. Be fair. Give justice. Be fair. Give justice. There's a scripture said, give unto Caesar what is due to Caesar. 
God wants us to be honest in everything that we are doing. When you do good, let me tell you something. When you are, if you want to know when you are doing good in life, a lot of people won't follow you. They won't like you. Nah. They won't like you because you're too straightforward. When you are keeping it 100% real. Hallelujah. I remember last year, my daughter said to me, Mommy, I'm going to introduce you to an accountant to do your taxes. And she don't lie. She's a Christian. She won't lie on your taxes for you to get any money. But she is very good at what she does. I said, I want to meet her. And when I met the woman to do my taxes, <laughs> My spirit begin to agree with her spirit. People of God, it's time for us to do what is right. If you will be rich one day, God will do it. Mm. Just like that. We don't have to lie to get anywhere in life. And when we used to do it, it didn't go well. Some people said I was rich when I was in sin. Because you were lying and dishonest. The richest life you can ever live is in Christ. If you're supposed to be rich financially or wealthy, God will give it to you. But you are rich in Christ. You are rich. You have the word of God. When I was in sin, none of my friends were broke. Because I don't keep broke friends when I was in sin. Because I was poor. So I wanted to be around people who were living it up. And I didn't realize what I was doing. Now that I'm in Christ, I'm rich in Christ. I have the word of God. I can defend anything that stands before me and my family. I can pray for others. This is what God is doing in this time. Let us stop chasing money. And let God bless us. Allow God to bless us. When we chase the things that God didn't give us, we end up in sin. We end up and get into trap and get muddy. And our water becomes muddy. Somebody said, talk the truth and shame the devil every day. Every day. We have to be honest people of God. The Bible did just remind us in Zechariah chapter 8. Even when you're in your house, tell the truth. When people come before you as a child of God and they lie to you, how does that make you feel? It's the same way when you lie to someone else. <laughs> the other day I was in Jamaica. And my son that lives in Jamaica, he was with me the whole day that Sunday. We cook, we ate, and we were just laughing and talking. And I was asking God to reveal him to me, my own son, because I don't live with him. He's a grown man. So somebody called me on the phone, and he was right there. And they were talking about him <laughs> and what he said. And the things that he was saying, and the person was not lying. They didn't know he was there. And when the phone conversation ends, I look at him. He said, I'm leaving. I said, where are you going? You're not going anywhere. I said, you're not leaving. He said, you don't want me to leave? I said, no. I said, God is just showing me who you are. And you have to change. And before we left Jamaica, he gave his life to the Lord. I said to him, you're not going anywhere. You're not leaving. The person was talking everything about him and how he feels about his mother and his siblings and how he feels about life, everything, and they did not lie. And when the conversation ends, I begin to look at him. And he was shame. He's my son. He was shame. I said to him, listen, don't be ashamed. It's how you feel. 
He said, I'm going home. I said, no, don't leave. I don't want you to leave. <laughs> God will expose the devil. I said, don't. And I didn't argue. We didn't have an argument. He was as quiet as a mouse. And he fell asleep. And when he woke up, I gave him a plate to go because we already had dinner. We ate and we talked. And then God allowed that thing to happen. So you see, when you speak the truth, even in your very courts, even in your home, God will fix your home. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't live there. So when people get mad at their family members who are away, they say things. I just laugh. I said, I thank God for humility. If it was the old me, his mother, I would punch him straight in his face. I'm serious. Because I was one very, I was one very ignorant mother, single mother. But no, because God changed me. We would have a big fight. Knowing me and the person that I used to be, he knew I'm changed. Before I leave, he gave his life to the Lord. Because I just laughed. I said, Lord, I thank you for humility. I just sat there and I looked at him. And I said, what do you have to say for yourself? Because I know this is not lie, what we just heard. He said, well, that part, I said, look, don't even cut nothing out. I know it's true. He was not in court. I'm not any judge. God is the only judge here. But I had a different view of things concerning him. Because now I know he's revealing himself. But I wasn't there, so God allowed this thing to happen for me to understand. When some people are in pain, their language change. But according to the word of God, we shouldn't crack under pressure. And this is where we have to be careful. We give information when we are angry. When we are angry and we say certain things, we cannot take it back. We cannot take it back. Hallelujah. My God. We cannot get it back. When we say some things when we're angry. Once you release a word, that's it. In your very house, according to the book of Zechariah chapter 8. Speak the truth. Your children might be upset, but it is the truth. The Bible said, these are the things that you shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Execute judgment of truth and peace in your gates. My God, we thank him for the word. And I thank God for all these revelations. I do. I thank God for all these revelations. Galatians, Psalms, Acts. So you see, it's Old and New Testament. Zechariah, Proverbs, 1 Corinthians. Yeah. I thank him for it. So we can go through the Bible and, and, and understand that every information is there to help us to grow. The time that we will spend to tear down somebody else, we should repent. This is what the Bible said. Acts chapter 3 verse 19 said, repent. So your sin can be blotted out. So you can be alright. Psalm chapter 51 verse 10 asks God to create in us a pure heart and renew the right spirit within us. It says we should pray that he don't take away the Holy Spirit from us. He won't cast us away out of his presence. God wants to help us. But are we ready for the help? 
Are we ready to be clean? Instead, we just want to talk about other people and, and point out other people's flaws. Hallelujah. We want to talk about other people and point out their flaws. My God. What about ours? Pick out the beam out of our eye. A beam is like a light post. A big beam is like what they put in the train track to make the train. Yes. <laughs> hey. Yes. And you know, it was Jesus who said it. He said, pick out the beam out of your own eyes. Matthew chapter 7 said, pluck out your own, wash your face before you start washing somebody else's face. Matthew chapter 7. Hallelujah. I like I, I like to laugh when I when I when I read these hallelujah when I read these scriptures because sometimes when we are bringing the word of God it helps also the person it's supposed to convict the very person that's bringing the word of God so if you are not right there are certain scripture that you won't use some people say oh I never heard that one before there are no scriptures that should be withholding from you. You have to be living a certain life in order to be able to bring certain scripture. Because it brings conviction on the person that's bringing it. Jesus said, And why behold thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? But consider not the beam that is in thine own eye. So there is a moat, a little moat that is in your brother's eye. But you are looking at the, you're not looking at the, you're not looking at the beam that is in your eye. You can't see properly because one of your eye is covered with beam. But we see the small speck in Brother Charles' eye. Brother Charles have a little speck in his eye. And you see it. But your left eye cover with a beam. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we will repent so God can fix us. Matthew chapter 7. It says, go fix yourself. That's what the word of God means. Go and fix yourself. Go, go, go sort out your thing. Go and sort out what's going on with you. It said, why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own eye? So why are we talking about somebody else when we have our own issue to sort out? Hallelujah. Yes, I'm saying it. I'm saying it. Why would somebody worry about Sister Kayan when they have their own problems? Why would somebody worry about you? Why would somebody worry about Sister Maxine when they got their own issues? Why would you worry about me when you have so much to fix? We're not talking about anybody. We're trying to correct our, our thing. We're trying to clean our own house. Let us stop trying and begin to do it. Somebody said, Lord, help me to do it and not just say it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, help me, oh God, to do it and not just say it. Because some of us, we like to talk. Lord, help me to pick out the beam out of my own eyes. 
and not just say it. Lord, help me to speak the truth in my home and not just pretending. Lord, help me to come out of sin. My God, Lord, help me with my foolishness so I can come out of sin. Lord, I know I'm not my own. Lord, help me to not be foolish anymore. Lord, help me to, rem to, to, to stay strong in the word. Pray. Pray that God help you to fix you. And we don't worry about somebody else's sin. Why, would, why should we sit down and point out other people's sin? What about our sins? We got so many errors to fix. How do we find time? May the Lord bless us today with this word. Hallelujah. Jesus said, he said, go clean your face and stop worrying about somebody else with dirt on their face. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. May the Lord bless you here today. May the Lord direct your steps. May the Lord order your steps. May the Lord lead you and guide you. May the Lord open your eyes to see around you. I pray for every soul that is here. I pray for every soul that view this message. May this message help you to walk good. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. For some people. I've been asking me. If the Lord bless you. And you want to pay an offering. The number is there. Because people are constantly asking me. Yes. You can, you can do it right here. At 860-634-8557. God bless you. If you have a donation, some people are looking for ministries to bless in this season because God is speaking. You can do it right here with Zell, Cash App, or PayPal. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. If you want to be a part of the ministry, you can contact me on WhatsApp at 860-634-8557. May the Lord continue to bless you as you walk in the light. Amen. Hallelujah. My time is up. I have to go. Be blessed of the Lord. Jesus.